Hello and welcome to the first episode or edition of the Medique Foundation plugin. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about how to use this plugin and give a basic overview of all of its features. Um, right here there's a web page that I put together uh, for the plugin itself just describing uh, in some detail what the uh, features are of the plugin. As you can see you can do a slab on grade, a stem wall, and just a basic slab at the moment and then there's some other things that are t actually under construction so um, anyways in here you can purchase the plugin it's a I think currently ten dollars for the uh, license so let's jump right into it um, we have the foundation plugin toolbar right here up top and as you can see uh, we have the stem wall the slab on grade the basic slab and then these two buttons are still under construction. There's nothing there. And then uh, the engineering as well. And then this one is the global settings. And I'm going to show you uh, in here it's important when you first install the plugin to go ahead and if you've registered it to put your serial, no serial number in and then save the settings and then restart SketchUp so that it can uh, make sure it's properly in the registry if it's on Windows. <coughs> so <coughs> Yeah, and there's a bunch of more options in here. I'm not going to get into a lot of details, but it, there's really not uh, too much involved. Basically, if you want to have the plugin put your different um, elements on different layers, then you're going to want to turn layers on or off, depending on what you want to do there. And of course, you can always custom name the layers that are created as well. And then materials, you can auto assign materials, or you can also turn that off. But we will go ahead and just leave that. Uh, set up as it is. I think when you first install the plugin, these are by default turned off, so you probably might want to turn those on. Alright, so let's close out of this. Okay, so the first one that I want to show you is a uh, stem wall foundation. Now, generally what I like to do if I'm doing like a polygon shape, I like to actually lay out the outline of the foundation just, you know, with some lines. It makes it easier to snap to, but it's whatever you want to do. But first of all, let's just show you a rectangular stem wall foundation. And we'll just click rectangle there. And then we can do a post and beam as well uh, with the interior bearing. Or we can do a stud wall interior bearing. So let's just stick with the post and beam. And you can drop this anywhere you like. And if you do a rectangular one, uh, you'll notice down here you can uh, key in the actual foundation dimensions. Sometimes that's easier. So I'm going to do that. Just hit enter and then go here and I'm going to go to 32. And now you see it pops up a whole ton of options. <laughs> so sometimes it gets a little bit out of control and I think I may have to revisit uh, this menu to trim it down and drop some of these interior footing options into a separate menu, but that's a discussion for another day. So we're going to turn on the uh, interior floor beam. And you notice it says X direction or Y direction. So this is the direction that the floor beam will, uh, the direction it will take. And in our case, uh, let's see, we're going to do, let's put the floor beam in the Y direction. And we'll go ahead and then position in it. <coughs> let's go ahead and put it at the uh, 12 foot location. And then, you can, as you can see, there's just a lot of options here. I'm not going to try to explain all these today, but... And I'm also going to put in joist pockets because... Or no, crawl space vents, yeah. So usually this is turned off, but I ha I, I'm going to make sure that's turned on. And then hit OK. And then the rebar, just kind of leave that all default for now. And the anchor bolts, just leave that as default. And then, of course, it gets into the vent widths. And by the way, the vent inserts right now, currently there is none. So even if you choose plastic, it won't do anything. It'll just it'll just leave a hole there, basically. And you can specify which walls. Let's just do all walls. <coughs> and hit OK. OK. So what I've done is I've actually uh, turned this um, concrete layer kind of transparent so you can see it better. See what's going on inside the foundation. Let's just leave it transparent for now. Um, so you can see it's created the, the footing and the rebar inside the footing, also the rebar 
inside the top of the stem wall. You could you can specify another rebar to go at the bottom of the wall. <coughs> the anchor bolts, uh, it spaces them, you know, per uh, the spacing in that anchor bolt menu. And, you know, it has a certain spacing that does from the edges as well. So, uh, pretty simple to use. Um, not much to talk about with that. Let's just go ahead and delete that one. Um, let's try now the polygon shape foundation. So, if we go polygon here, hit OK, and now I'm just going to trace out those dots there on the endpoints. And I find this is easier than trying to. I mean, you can you can do it however you want, I suppose. But so now on the polygon foundation, first of all, joist pockets they don't it doesn't that option actually doesn't work. It gives you the option, but it doesn't exist. Um, so we'll just go ahead and leave all those as, as default for now. And let's try putting a bottom bar in on that foundation stem wall to see what happens. And then the anchor bolt, same thing. You can see the anchor bolt spacing is six feet on center, so you can change that to whatever you like, four feet on center, five feet on center, whatever your requirements. And of course, the seal plate width will determine how far from the edge of concrete that the, the, the bolts are uh, centered at. So that's what controls that. And then there's the corner distance. And again, it wants a bunch of information for the vent heights. Uh, the important information here really is the max spacing. So you get, you set this to control, you know, where and how many vents you want, really, and the minimum wall length. So you know, you can set it so if you have a small wall, it won't try to put vents at each corner. So you can see these two are 12 foot walls. It didn't, and this one as well, this third wall here. So it didn't try to put vents on these walls. <coughs> Let's go ahead and change that back here, just so we can see how it looks normally. And we actually did an interior footing. We turned that on. That turned on by from the last previous uh, iteration. But you know you can you can turn that off or on, depending on if you need it. So that's a stem wall foundation. So let's go ahead and show you a slab on grade. So a slab on grade. We're going to start with a rectangle first. Really simple. Just go ahead, key in your dimensions. That's what I usually do. It's to 32 foot length. And all these, you can turn a garage curb on or not. You can turn on interior footings as well on these. And let's see, interior footing location. I'm going to try an interior foot. I haven't done one for a while. Sure. Let's do it in the Y direction. And then we go OK. And let's turn on number three bar instead of the mesh. And hit OK. OK, so. Now if we just hide our concrete here for a second, you can see what's going on inside of there. So you can see that you've got a slab on grade, you've got the thickened edge footing with the rebar and the top and the bottom as typical. And then you got got th number three bar on a 24 by 24 grid. And you can see we've also got the, uh, <coughs> the thickened footing there in the interior. So let's just go change that back. So you can see that that is what it looks like on the underside. Okay, and then again, let's uh, let's see what happens with the polygon shape foundation slab on grade. So we go ahead and trace out. Just grab these points. It's quick and easy. Uh, let's turn off the interior footing for now. And you can have type A or type B profiles. Let's do a type B just to demonstrate that. And 
Let's turn on also the FPSF, which is the Frost Protected Shallow Foundation option, and you'll see what that does. Okay, so hit OK. We've got the bars. Let's go ahead and turn on the mesh. It'll take a little more to draw that because there's more polygons involved, of course. Okay, we've got the anchor bolts, leave those default. Okay, so now we've got the frost protected shallow foundation insulation requirements. So this is coming from the IRC and the IBC. Um, and if you're at all familiar with that, you'll know what the A, B, and C dimensions are. But this is pretty standard for, um, I think it's 2,500 or 3,000 uh, freezing days on, on the index in the IRC. So just hit, go ahead and hit default for that. Okay, so you can see we have insulation now surrounding the foundation. And if we turn back on this here, let's take a look what we've got inside there. So, so you can see we've got mesh instead of wire mesh instead of the uh, rebar. All the elements are there. And you can see we have a different type of foundation footing, thickened edge. So it kind of just slopes out instead of having the two surfaces. So there's that as well. <coughs> okay, and then last but not least, we have just your basic slab. Um, and this is good for, you know, uh, basement uh, foundations where you're having a slab as the floor. And you can do a rectangle and a polygon. Let's just do a rectangle to show that real quick. You know, it's real simple. There's not much to it. You can do interior footings as well. Turn the reinforcement. There's no anchor bolts, of course, because it's just a slab. <coughs> okay, and so, yeah. Let's, um, I think we turned off the... Re or we turned off the... Uh, the rebar on that one by accidentally. Okay, just type yes. I'll slab reinforcement, turn that off. That's why it didn't go. And so there you go. There's your slab with reinforcement with without. I mean, if it's without, you might as well just draw a rectangle yourself without the plug in. But uh, if you've got to have the reinforcement, then you know, you don't want to do all that by hand. So, in a nutshell, that's pretty much what we have for the foundation plug in. Um, you know, there's there's a lot more of re in regards to all the options, but um, I'm not going to get into all that right now. And you know, you can do all kinds of crazy shapes if you want. Let's do a frost protected stem wall. Uh, let's turn off the interior floor because it doesn't make sense in this case. Stop bar, yes, anchor bolt back. And you can see you can do virtually any shape you want. I mean, <laughs> not that you'd ever build that building, but it's basically will it'll generate any shape. And you can see the rebar in the bottom and the top of the stem wall. And you got your foundation vents. Of course, that wouldn't they wouldn't apply in this case, but and then of course now you have all the layers too. So you know you can turn off layers at your convenience. You can turn off the anchor bolts. You can turn off the rebar. And, of course, if you have a wood, you can turn off the fra foundation framing. <coughs> so, hopefully this will speed you up in your design of any foundations. Uh, a lot more options yet to be added. You need a tool for cutting out uh, windows and doors. And also, I've been thinking about doing steps in foundations. So, where you have a stepped foundation for various elevations. Um, and then, of course, all the engineering and calculation tools. So hopefully that will be helpful for you, and if you have any questions, feel free to call me or email me at any time, and I will do my best to answer those in a very timely manner. All right, thank you.